Hey guys, I'm Tim. And I'm Dan. This is the Board Game Rundown. This week we've got a top 10. Don't get used to those top fives. We're going to change it up on you. Nope. You seem so excited about one, that. One time thing. Oh yeah, sure. We got a top 10. It's exciting. Dan's got some news. <laughs> yes. Who knows what it could be about. Anything. It could be anything. Hopefully board game related. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Uh, we've got some Kickstarters. And then yeah, we'll get to that glorious top 10 we're talking about. Correct. All right, Dan, what you got for news? What do I have for news? Well, first of all, I thought this might interest you because you recently got your hands on a Shining game, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. they announced a the second one. Did you look into that? No, what? D- different, different people, I think. Different company, all different. But I, I just found out this is evidently the 40th anniversary of The Shining this year. So people are saying, like, expect, yeah, 80. expect sure. a lot of Shining uh, games. So wait. So you say another one. So like You mean game. like a new Shining and not Dr. Sleep? Which is the sequel to The Shining? Yes. J- okay. Yes. Just checking. Just another game with The Shining IP. I'm a nerd and I is, read books. Is, yeah, I saw the movie too. Ewan McGregor's cool. I haven't seen the movie. I've only read the book. So it's called The Shining Escape the Overlook Hotel. Okay. So they so added the subtitle. The s- yes. Okay. It is a co op. No, like I'm saying, different game, Tim. Right. Okay. They didn't yeah, just so it's add not a title. just called The Shining. Right. Correct. But I mean, there's already a game just called The Shining. So they had yeah, to add. They didn't have to. Okay. So it is evidently cooperative, okay. escape room style game Ooh. where you are working together. This is the part that really confused me is because it says you play as Danny and Wendy. Yep. But it's two or more. It's one or more players or two or more players. So you've got so, Danny, Wendy, and is it Tony? No, I think it's what Tony. I'm saying is I think it's just Danny and Wendy, but oh. you guys are working together to just control them. Yeah, but I yeah. want to be Tony. You could be Tony. Like in, Isn't in that the little in real boy that life. lives in the back of his yeah. throat. You can do that. Okay. It's weird. I won't want to play with you. But odd. It is odd. So yeah, you're so, Yeah, so okay. it's cooperative escaping. You're using the shining gifts to uncover clues and okay. um and it's work together to escape the overlook hotel. I'm going to ask hotel. you a question that you probably don't have the answer probably to. Probably not. Who's putting this game out? Who's Yeah, I didn't write that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if it was like Sorry. Pros- Prospero I, Hall or... I, uh, I'm actually really annoyed with myself because I didn't write down. They have made another game that is Scooby-Doo themed. That is okay. like an escape the mansion kind of thing, I think. And so it uses that system. Okay. Um, whatever that system is called, I Except don't remember. Except Scooby-Doo has like five characters you could be. That's, what, that's why I'm so confused. Unless you could be like Doc. Doing like I'd, I'd be down with being it, Doc. It's totally possible because, you know, not everything's been released on it. So it's totally possible. It's just that on the on the initial page I read, I read uh, all it said was players will work cooperatively and control Danny and Wendy. All right. So, I'm, so I was expecting it to say one to two players. Sure. And then it said like two or more. And I was like, well, what does that mean? <laughs> it means or more. I guess it's yeah, going to be like the little, it... um, a little escape room things. What are those called? I can't remember. They're awesome. Like Arctic uh, Lab. Oh, yeah. Those Unlock. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, so they're like those where everyone just sits at a table and sure. you're just working together. Sure. Uh, yeah. I guess. Okay. But uh, yeah. So I, I thought you might be interested in Escape Room plus The Shining. I am no? totally interested Sounds because cool. I love The Shining. Yeah. And so. most things The Shining. Uh, and the second bit of news that I have, Dun-dun-dun. probably going to excite um, quite a few people. Very popular game, Terraforming Mars. Have you heard about this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, coming back to Kickstarter. Yep. Yep. On they, uh, I don't think it's official, but I heard that Bonacore said June 9th. I think that that's accurate. Yeah. Okay. So, but kick, Terraforming Mars coming back to Kickstarter just with a giant box to store everything with. Everything. And the thing that excites me, here's the thing. I don't even like Terraforming Mars that much. It's a good game and I, I enjoy playing it, but I play it like once every six months. Sure. It is it is just a long game and it's it's a lot to think about. Depends on who you play with. I yes. guess. For me, it's always been a long sure. game. Uh, but, um, but man, those 3D tiles. I know. Uh, 3D tiles. Dude. I almost want it just for the 3D tiles. tiles. Terraform Mars was one of the first games where I got on like Etsy and stuff, and I was like, man, what can I find? And oh, I never, sure. I never caved. I never it is a it. game that begs to be upgraded. Yeah. Made in Indiana. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. It is made in Indiana. Okay, so <clears throat> like yours, your bit of news, you inspired me. It mm-hmm. crosses over to Kickstarter. Okay. Uh, because like terraforming mars that is not out yet got it uh it is not going to be out till next year oh but simon has announced coming to kickstarter and my old butt is very excited he man the masters of the universe <laughs> board game okay coming to kickstarter produced by simon so you know there's going to be a bunch of crazy yes, miniatures great miniatures uh with all the crazy crazy he man characters that don't make any dang sense but i don't care I grew up with it. We don't know anything it. about how it's going to play yet? Nope. Okay. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing other than they, they've announced that it's going to come to Kickstarter yeah, and in And you're like sweating. <gasps> Ooh, hey, what's man. happening? <laughs> yeah. I am 
uh, disproportionately excited about yeah. it. No, it, it could be cool. It yeah. could be cool. I'm definitely going to look really hard at that when that okay. comes out. Yeah, I'd be more excited for Thundercats, but it's cool. Oh, I'd be down for some Thundercats. <laughs> but give me the 80s Thundercats. Sure. Right? That's But okay. Yeah. yeah. So He-Man. Maybe Thundercats. You Maybe never know. Thundercats. I'm working on it now. Right. Okay, get on that. Yeah, it's, it's called Lightning Dogs. I couldn't get the copyright. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, I, hate, I hate that I laughed at that. <laughs> um, Lightning yeah. Dogs, the game. Buy that <laughs> yeah. domain right now. All right, what do you got? You got Kickstarters for us, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, what do you got? It's acting like you don't, jeez. Oh, I got Kickstarters. Okay, so a couple things that we've mentioned before, but I just wanted to mention. So, for example, uh, Sea of Legends is in its last three days. Okay. So I want to talk about that because we will not be talking about it again. Sure. Uh, so Sea of Legends by uh, Guildhall Studios. Mm -hmm. uh, one to five players, 40 minutes per player. It is funded, so it's safe. Hop in. Last three days, you can hop in safe. <laughs> it's good. Uh, $90 to $155 for the all-in package, and it's supposed to deliver February next year. So you are... Going to uh, get it August of next year. <laughs> sure. So you are basically... Um, it's an open-world game uh -huh. where you are going around as your pirate captain, gaining a crew. You have a nemesis you have to deal with. You can fall in love. It just feels like an open-world sandbox. Is that why you play games? Pi yeah. To fall in love? Well, I got to do it somehow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Just checking. Um, but yeah, so the first person to 10 notoriety wins, and you gain that notoriety by doing all that stuff I was talking about. You fight your nemesis, you you explore, you fall sure. in love, you build a crew, you gain goods. It's, pi uh, it's pirate stuff. It's pirates. So yeah, Sea of Legends. I wanted to talk about that because three days left. If you're interested, hop in now. And I really do like those kind of sandboxy open world games. I want to like them. I haven't played one. Oh. I haven't played a truly open world we, game. We have to play so, Zaya Legend of a Drift System. Oh, you know what? You taught us like two rounds of that. That sure. was the first one I played. Uh, so you did teach us a couple rounds of that. It's yeah. fun when we so have I more time. That. Yeah, when yeah, you have more time exactly. and can like uh, spend like two hours like just really mm -hmm. kind of playing it and doing some missions. It's it's good. Yep. My big one, my big one. Should I start with my big one or should I, I'll start with my regular one first? Okay. I'm I'm gonna plug uh, Hero the card game again. Yes. Uh, twenty three days left. Mm -hmm. It's like two hundred plus percent funded. So as Dan says, it's safe. You can <laughs> jump in. Um, you're. It is a drafting. You you draft a deck, and you duel somebody. Yeah. Uh, it, so only one v one, right? One v one. Yeah. Two v two. Oh, it, it can oh, support right. up to four players. That's right. You mentioned that. So you can do a free for all. Yeah. You can that's do a right. free for all. You can do two v two or one v one. So lots of options. I don't know for a fact, but I look at this game and I feel like there's room for growth. So should it do well and get a little bit a uh, little bit of popularity that you could see other things come out for this game sure. and kind of expand replayability and things like that. It's only 17 bucks. There's still, as of the day we're filming, it's still like 23 days. So even by the time this show pops out, you'll still have three weeks easily mm -hmm. uh, to, to give it a look. So really excited about that. And I, I'm backing it. So. Yeah. And I haven't, yeah, I actually cool. haven't checked it out yet. I want to, I told, why I told you last week, I want to check even it out. Talk about these things. <laughs> I know. If if you can't get to me, I can't yeah. get to anyone else. Nobody, <laughs> nobody. Yeah, no, I want to check it out. It's it's just called Hero. Hero. Yeah, Hero so the card simple. game. So simple. Hero the card game. I will I will do my due diligence. Sure. That's an expression. I believe you. So uh, next, uh, this is funny. I wanted to talk about this because okay. last week we did a list of uh, rescue workers. Uh oh. Okay, and we brought up good Somebody cop, listen? bad cop. <gasps> Is and good, good cop, bad cop has an expansion. What? On, yeah, has an expansion on Kickstarter. So I'm going to talk about an expansion really quick. It's Let's called, do it. It's called Promoted. And this is very interesting. So good cop, bad cop made by Pull the Pin Games. This turns into like a campaign game. So you play a game and then you like play the next game and you like rank up and your, okay. your, what you have done is remembered. Throughout the game. Oh, people remember what yeah. I've done in previous yeah, trader that kind games. Of and what it gets <laughs> sure. Me for sure. And years. so the point is, whoever has the best, like, um, I didn't write down the word they used, but like, you know, uh, the best status or whatever, like, okay. wins at the end of that or something. So that's just really interesting. So, all right. Good Cop, Bad Cop's four to eight players, plays in 10 to 20 minutes. It's just short um, deduction. It plays fast. It's yeah, fun. Short deduction game. Uh, it has 24 days left. Again, it is funded. Whoa. It is safe. safe. The best kind of Kickstarters are the safe ones. Sure. Um, it's $14 for the expansion. Oh, yeah. Or $67 to get everything Good Cop, Bad Cop. 
all the expansions, the original game. There are a, like a big, are, big box sure. for the new expansion, all kinds of stuff. Okay. Um, and that is also supposed to go February of next year for shipping. Now, because that's that. cards, that might... Yeah, that, that one might, might work. Come yeah. out on time. But uh, right. yeah, so that that's cool because I was just talking about how I really want to play Good Cop, Bad Cop, and then boom, new expansion yeah. that turns into like a weird campaign it's idea. It's like Google was listening to you. It, it almost, Uh-oh. yeah. I'm okay with that. All right. Yeah. All right. My last one. Yeah, I'm wondering I'm, if this is your big one. My last one. I'm. I was so excited about. Oh, okay. Then no, I know it. I was so. I've been excited about for a long time. It finally comes out, and I'm like, mm, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Kemet, yeah. Blood and Sand. Yeah. I'm a big version one fan of Kemet and I've been waiting for blood and sand waiting and waiting knew it was coming and it's like oh it's like 1.5 they're gonna add some stuff streamline gameplay things like that yeah I'm like okay awesome let's do it and then I was looking at the pledge levels and I'm like oh it's only like 28 bucks to upgrade oh okay. and so like you're gonna get uh upgraded tiles because mm-hmm. in Kemet it is territory control um You've got these, they're basically like four-sided die uh, that are oversized, and they're pyramids. And so the number on the top is like the level of your pyramid, and then that tells you like what tiles you can buy, potentially, of those colors. So there's different colors also, white, red, and blue, I think. Uh, Anyways. white and blue. Sure. And how Egyptian. So you're super excited. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so so you you uh, you get these tiles that give you special abilities. They might give you like monsters that you can use, and so it's a really neat game. Haven't I play a lot of territory control games? Mm-hmm. Enjoy a lot of territory control games, and this one has a really unique twist on it. So Kemet Blood and Sand. It's like, oh, okay. The upgrade pack has new new tiles, like updated tiles, um, an updated divine intervention deck and like some i think maybe even some combat cards so so there's cards that give you like extra abilities and things like that i'm like sweet and then i'm looking at like what the kemet blood and sand comes with kemet blood and sand comes with like this whole new style of pyramid which is like an onyx pyramid which is not in the upgrade pack so it's like wait a minute what the heck Uh. and so there's like it's not really an upgrade pack yeah if it doesn't bring it up to the level of sure it's like a mini expansion. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> except that it's not a mini expansion because to get the new stuff, you really have to just... I'm saying if you get the upgrade pack, yeah. it almost feels more of a mini expansion because it doesn't get you everything that turns it into the new no, game. No, and it's like, I don't need upgraded tiles. The tiles that I have, it's not like I've been playing the game and going, gee, I wish these tiles were yeah, just, yeah. you know, a little bit I have bit never upgraded. played Kemet. So it's kind of so. chapped my cheeks a little bit. Yeah. And even though I'm still probably going to back it, I just now I'm going to back it at the regular version. There is a retailer pledge. So if you are oh. curious, hit up your game store and be like, hey, man, are you going to get in on that Kemet? Because I'd, I'd buy one from you, which I may end up doing anyways uh, through my game store that I like to hang out at. But um, I don't know why, man, but that upgrade pack really bothered me. Yeah. It really bothered me. And the way that they're doing the pyramids now is it looks like you are assembling the pyramids instead of you just turn. So, like, if oh. my pyramid was a level one, it was the four-sided Got guy it. with the level one at the top. Now right? it's the like level the four is but, four on top of each other. So, yes. And then the color of the pyramid, it looks like you the actual uh, color is like a little triangle you put on the top. Oh, okay. I mean, it's, you know... It looks really awesome. Yeah, it probably looks nice. Yeah. Uh, not in the upgrade pack. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call it an upgrade pack. Call yeah. it, like, if you want to spend the bare minimum to kind of, like, keep your toe in the sand, yeah. for lack of a better, uh-huh. uh, you can have this upgrade pack, thanks. Like, no, 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 no. Like, just sure. either put all the upgrade stuff in it. Like, I got a, uh, a upgrade pack for Belfort. I love Belfort. It's an older game. They did a reprint, and... Um, in the reprint, you could get and it you could get the uh, the new game and the exp- the or the upgraded updated version of the game and like some expansions. Or if you already have the game and the expansion, like here's a new expansion and here's like a little upgrade kit. And the upgrade kit in that for that basically makes your game the new one. Yeah, that's an upgrade kit. Mm-hmm, it's an upgrade. Right. I don't. I. <laughs> I'm really upset about this Kemet Blood and Sand upgrade pack. I really am. I can tell. Gosh. They can tell. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. Okay. That's why I didn't want... So Thanks we were talking sharing. earlier today, and I'm like, oh, I got something to say about that, but I'm going to save it. 
Correct. Because I didn't want you to sit through that twice. Well, yeah, and I did not. I didn't look at the Kemet thing very much anyway because I've never played Kemet. Sure. I didn't like the the idea of Kemet that much. Like not like you know I disliked it, but I was just like, oh, you know, it you doesn't just appeal hate me. Egyptians. <laughs> wow, I actually love Egyptian lore. It's so interesting. It is really. Interesting. Um, but uh. Yeah, I don't know. I just I, I was even confused having not played Kemet because to me it sounded like from reading the stuff it just sounded like a second edition or something. Like right. It's coming back, um, and then you and then you kind of look at the pictures. You're like, well, that's not the same game. Right. <laughs> so I don't right. know what's going on. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So what do you what do you what do you got? What else you got? Well, I have two more, but one's gonna be really short. So this one I thought you were gonna see and bring up because this is more of a Tim game, but that like Ooh. Euthia Torment of Resurrection. No. Huge game, which Uh-oh. is why I thought that you were going to bring it up. But, you know, huge game with miniatures and stuff like that. But uh, so uh, made by Dia Games. Okay. Dia Games, probably Dia. One to four players, 30 to 120 minutes per player. Wow. Because <laughs> it's scenario driven. Okay. So depending on which scenario you sure. play, it'll be longer and shorter. But the reason I'm bringing this one up is because, again, kind of like um, uh, Sea of Legends, 46 hours left. Oh, so already funded, but forty six hours left. So if you're if you're interested in this, get game, up on it. Yeah, look or at get it. Get in now. a time machine. Also, important thing to note is if you really really look and you missed the actual Kickstarter, but you're close to uh, when it ended within a week or two, you can usually get in Correct. on a late pledge. It'll usually take you like to their website, and you can late pledge. So. Yeah. All is not lost. Yes. You can still get in there. Yeah, speaking of, while I'm saying 46 hours now, by the time the video is out, it might be three. <laughs> so right. take, a, take a look. It's in a book. Um, so uh, $79 to $906. Holy <laughs> shnikes. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. So, so obviously $906 is because, it comes, is because it comes with way more upgraded pieces and miniatures and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, so, so you're basically, in for 900 right? Uh, yeah, already backed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I wrote down just a bunch of, cause so it's, it's a hex board that is built at the beginning and then you, you, it's competitive obviously. And you explore, you mine the tiles for resources, you trade with the NPCs, you fight, you go on quests, you level up your character, train your character to get new skills. Um, you, uh, you get s- sets of armor. Like once you complete the chainmail armor, you can upgrade that to nice. another thing and stuff. Like there's so much going on in this game. Wow. It's not my type of game, but like for people who like that, just big, heavy, like, I don't even know. It's almost so it's like, like Gloomhaven on crack. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, do you like Gloomhaven? How about more? Yeah. I don't know if it, it, it's not going to have, it doesn't look like it's going to have I a, mean, any for 900 bucks. It better come with a suit of armor that you can wear. That'd be, wear that'd while be cool. You play. Th- then once you complete the set you can upgrade it right a different set then yeah. you mail that old set in <laughs> yeah. they mail you a, a shinier but uh yeah and the person you gain reputation that's how you win right so on. the first person who gains a certain amount of reputation wins by doing all these things so yeah it's 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 big it's a big looking game people like big looking games uh, i'm guilty of that i'm guilty of that um and my last one small i'm gonna bring this up because it doesn't interest me at all <laughs> no but uh so this one is uh i feel like this one is in in trouble. I'm just gonna say that. So the other ones were like safe backs. Uh-huh. I, do not, I do not feel like this one is a safe. Uh oh. Um, they have a goal of two hundred twenty two thousand um, dollars, mm-hmm. and they are currently at like two thousand or something. Ouch. They do have thirty days left, but still, yeah. it's not growing fast enough. I think. Sure. I'm still gonna bring it up because this is a theme that I think is actually interesting for a lot of people. It's it's a dexterity game okay. where you play uh, football. Against each other. It's called MFL International Mini Football League, I think is what that is, International. And so I, I thought I'd bring this up to you because you like, like flick them up. Oh, yeah, like that, right? I do. So you have a big football field uh-huh. and you have this special uh, device that um, there's like a, a little football. football. There's like an actual little miniature football. Okay. And you have this special device that you line up and you hit it and it like flicks the football. Oh. And, and there's uh, the goal field post. goalposts as well. Um, and so the point is you set your guys up in formation and then you you flick it and like so if you hit your guy that's a completed pass and the football starts there if you hit an enemy oh, guy it's weird. an interception nice. um if you hit your guy but then it bounces and hits an enemy guy that's a fumble 
Um, and they have all these rules built in. And obviously, you can go for a field goal. And it, you, you once you get close enough, you can get a guy in the touchdown zone. And if you hit him, that's a touchdown. So it's like this dexterity game that okay. seems to do a pretty good job of okay. capturing that football feeling. And now so I, I'm very interested. Yeah. At first, I was like, eh, I used to play a lot of uh, paper football on sure. the desk at school. You know, while I should have been paying attention. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, hmm, but this now sounds really kind of neat. Yeah, I just, I the first thing I saw, I was like, oh, people that like flick them up are probably going to like this. So yeah. it, it seems like a football version of that idea. Um, th- The thing is, though, so $88 is the cheapest pledge. Oh. And I'm just, I'm looking at the game, and I'm just thinking, why? Like, I don't know if they're doing a good enough job explaining what all's in the game. Sure. Because all you see is the goalpost, the mat, and the miniatures. Like, and they're they're like almost chibi plastic looking miniature guys like they're not super fancy sure so i'm i'm just confused so it goes from 88 to 556 but this also confused me the 556 is because it comes with four copies of everything okay so why do you need four copies of everything it's not a it's not a retail pledge three friends i don't know that's I, weird. yeah that's so weird do you is it like do you get more P, like you don't need four footballs sure. to play football so sure. what are you doing so i'm far from an expert yeah, uh, but okay. I would I would feel like uh, a game like that might be a little overproduced. Yes, so, that's what I feel. So part of the brilliance of Flick 'em Up is that they're just meeples, and you've got, you know, you've got these these larger, you know, kind of oversized meeples, right? And then you put little, you got little cardboard hats you put on them, so they look like they're mm-hmm. wearing co- cowboy hats, yeah, and, the hats and that flip. indicates, yeah. you know, whether they've been used. And it's like, why couldn't you? use that same mechanic and probably maybe I'm wrong but probably save yourself a ton of money a in ton of money and I really do think that while Kickstarter is not exactly the place a lot of hardcore sports fans uh, you live. know yeah, yeah, live sure. I do feel like there's a market for that for people who are like oh on, on Super Bowl day before the game starts we got this cool dexterity thing we can do we can challenge each other I do feel like there's a market uh, there okay I will tell you this example directly yesterday wife was out shopping kids were playing I had some time. I busted out my copy of Baseball Highlights mm-hmm. 2045 or whatever the year it is on there. <laughs> sure. I love that game and playing it solo. Oh, okay. Like, I love baseball. I wish there was baseball going on right now. Obviously, there can't be. I get it. But so I'm here, like, get my baseball fix playing my Baseball Highlights game because it recreates the feel of baseball uh, very well, in my opinion. Sure. And so, yes, there is definitely a market for, like, yeah. sports. And, and like, look at the page, because I do feel like looking at the page, I feel, I, I, I'm not a football fan. I'm not a sure. sports fan in general. Um, but I do feel like, I was like, oh, they do a pretty good job of capturing the idea of what you're doing there. Like, it's the, the mechanics they have are super simple, but, like, smart enough. Like, oh, so, yeah, so if you hit the opponent, but then, or if you hit your guy, but then it hits the opponent, he, he messed up your guy, right. making him fumble. Like, it, it all thematically works. I'm like, oh, this is clever. I just feel like an overproduction uh-huh. and a not maybe pushing the game on the right forum is going to hurt them. Sure. Right? Like, like, the whole Kickstarter thing, obviously, that's the way to get the money. Right. But you need to also send that Kickstarter link to all the sports forums and stuff then because otherwise you're you're not getting a lot Clearly of those guys fan of sports yeah no, yes yes exactly <laughs> um but that one is set to start shipping in december of this year oh no it, yeah if it gets funded just a lot of ifs on this one Gosh. is the issue but i wanted to bring it up because it is months. so different i was like why why, See, why don't people that, do this that sounds really neat yeah that sounds really neat i would just crack open i say everybody go home crack open your version of Look them up and see if you can figure out a way to make that work for football. <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, but I'm definitely going to look at that. Yeah, do it. Just it's out of curiosity. MFL International by HW3D. Don't know how okay. I'm supposed to say that. Sure. I think you just did. Yeah, good point. <laughs> I think I, you just Letters, did. numbers, you mix them together. I get yeah, they're, they're, it's a thing. <laughs> it's that, a thing. That, that is it for Kickstarter. That's our Kickstarters. Yeah. All right, guys. So now we are going to do a uh, our public service. We're going to give you a top 10 because there's so many and there's the potential for crossover on our lists. Yeah, we were worried that with... So we're doing a top five first games you should own. Like if you're starting your collection, these are some games you should look at because they are they either are hit hit home with a wide audience Yep. Um, or they're very easy games to get you into the hobby of like, oh, this is what I can be expecting. You know, that kind of stuff. So if you're playing games at a... At a you go to a friend's house, you don't actually own any games. Games and mm-hmm. you play something and you're like, that's amazing. 
I want to start getting some board games. And then you're like, but I need some games that I'm going to be able to get played. So I want to play them with family. I want to play them with, because maybe you're going to also try to indoctrinate non-gamers. Yes, always what you should do. The cult. Join (laughs) us. Uh, So yeah, we, between the two of us, came up with a list of 10 very solid, uh, very accessible games uh, that I think would go well on anybody's shelf. And there is a version of almost all of these. I think I have all oh, but yeah. two of these in my collection. And yep. some of them were very early purchases. There is only one me. game that I do not have on this, and it's because I have a similar game. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. So we're gonna you're gonna do the evens. Yes, I'll do the I will odds. do the evens because I've played all the evens. So number <laughs> ten. Uh number ten. A late addition to the list, one that we were talking about, um, but it's just so easy to get people to sit down and play this game. Villainous. Yep. Um, the game. Yes, we've talked about it almost ad nauseum, right? Um, we have done a review on it. Like, yes. The simple fact is the game plays a little long, so you have to know what you're getting into with that, but it is Which a is theme. probably why it's is low exactly. on the list, right? Which it's is why it's hot. 10. Yeah, low. Yeah, that's why it's 10. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the easy way to word that when you're confused. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so villainous is you are taking on the role of the Disney villains yep. and you're trying to finish your own movie. So like Scar wants to become king, you know, um, uh, Jafar wants to get the genie and become the all powerful guy. Like, and everyone else is playing through their movie, but they're trying to slow you down by playing your own good guys. So Tim might play Aladdin on me if I'm playing Jafar to right. slow me down. Um, it's, 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 it's a theme that you can almost sit anyone down and just be like, Hey, we're going to be playing through the animated Disney movies. Yeah. And, and almost like, everybody's oh, okay. seen one of them, right? Yeah, so sure. it's like, okay, which one do you like? Yeah. And at this point they have, you can be this guy. Is it 12, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, I think, or there's three expansions now. So 15. Yeah. So there's 15 to choose from and just great choices. Like, oh, when they added Radigan, I was Everybody like, they're adding Radigan? When they added He's Radigan. so good. So yeah, it's a uh, super, uh, Easy game to get people into. It's going to take a little bit of learning, but the game does do a great job with their little pamphlets. Yes. You know, you, each, you just read your own pamphlets. just get the people to read their player age. Sure. Yes. Uh, but, no, it is it is a very well-made, with the exception of one component, uh, game. It's well-produced. It's very pretty. It's very easy to find. You can find it in any game store. Yeah. You can find it in big box stores. Yeah. Uh, it's very easy to find. And everybody has seen a Disney movie for the most part. Yeah. So. And just because this matters to some people, I believe it plays two to six. Yeah, I think that's so right. So that matters right. to some people for your group. So two to six. Uh, great game. Tone it down with this next Marvel one. Fix that end game of the Marvel one. Pun intended. Please. Just a little bit. Please. Yeah, there's a Marvel version coming out. And that is probably going to be enough for me to, to get back in at least a little bit. Yeah, test the water again. But I... I love the first half of playing villains. Yeah, yeah. The idea I, is fantastic. Yes. And I, I like the game overall quite a bit. And I like looking at the player board. Because they're <laughs> yeah. all, I mean, in the cards. And yeah. the, the cards are really nice quality. Yeah, they, it's like they use screenshots, but yeah. then they're hand-drawn. So, like, they take a, a screenshot, but then redraw it so it has a different art style and it looks fantastic it looks really good love the it artwork. looks really good and the colors are very vibrant it's very pretty to look at mm-hmm. it's really good especially uh steamboat willie or whatever <laughs> he, he uh or pete is it pete is oh is he really he's a, a, he's, a, he's, he's the being funny. he's the expansion you said vibrant colors because he's black and white yeah i'm done <laughs> <laughs> Ding. number nine number nine is one of, is probably the third game i bought lords of Waterdeep. Oh. Yeah, it is the it is a excellent, excellent, excellent introduction to worker placement and set collection Mm -hmm. there. It is really simple to learn and to teach, but there is a lot of strategy to it and you can really get into it. And it's got a ton of replayability because there's a zillion missions and buildings that you can uh, build which create new spaces that you can go and, and select. Ignore if you were, if you are at any way put off by the uh, Dungeons and Dragons theme. Ignore it. It is a straight up excellent worker placement game. But Dan, uh, what a week or two ago, like blew my mind with the theme <laughs> and and how the theme really does matter. But basically, it's you've got meeples that are your workers and you're assigning them to locations, and then you 
are collecting these cubes and the cute colored cubes. So like orange, purple, white, black. Is that all of them? Orange, purple, white, black. I think so. Represent different character classes, wizard, soldier, cleric, warrior, assassin, and rogue. Yeah. Rogue. Uh, and so you're, you're gathering these different types of cubes and you might need two orange, two white and two black to do this quest. And that quest is going to give you victory points at the end of the game. <sighs> So many good things about it. So, like, my wife never goes, well, I'm recruiting two warriors. She's like, ah, give me two orange, uh -huh. you know, and that's and fine. it's because she does not see them as human beings. She sees them as pawns <laughs> because you are a secret lord of Waterdeep. So they are not, yeah. You're not like, oh, give me Cedric the Bard. And I, th I think when looking into the board game hobby, yep. worker placement needs to be an early thing you look into. Yes. Because they are so fun and have this great competitive nature to them. Um, and I think that Lords of Waterdeep should be one of the first ones you look at. I love Just, it. I absolutely love it. The only thing that is a slight negative for me with Lords of Waterdeep, the game is fantastic. I wish that the, I don't know what they're called, the like hero, the, the, the secret your, goal. Your secret lord. Yeah, your secret lord or whatever. Uh -huh. I wish those end point things were more interesting. Yeah. It's literally just like, have like three points per skullduggery mission and it's sure. so like we've seen this before that could have been more interesting but it doesn't take away from the game at all right the game is fantastic right my wife always assumes that i have the one that uh is for the most buildings oh yeah because i Just always like building i'm always <laughs> making the buildings because when people use your building you yeah, get a benefit get and a i'm like bonus. i like being lazy and just profiting off of your yeah yeah your stuff. So, like, I go to Tim's building because it gives me three orange, but I'm giving him one orange for free just right. by going there and stuff. Right. Yeah. And some of it is like coins or victory points. Yeah. It's really good. I, yeah. gosh, I love Lord Lord's Water. Deep. So good. So good. So good. So good. All right. Number, Number eight. Eight. Uh, I love this game. I well, love I'm going to say technically so a combination of two games. Yep. Depends on which theme interests you more. Doesn't matter. But love them both. Clank. Clank is so good. Or Clank in Space. Or Clank in Space. I was going to say, as I say at <laughs> my house, Clank in Space. Uh, so Clank is a deck building game that with also combines so many other awesome things. Yeah, with it has a board and you're moving around the board and collecting things. And the basic idea in original Clank yes. is you are going down into a cave Yep. Where a dragon is sleeping. And I he believe. is not happy. Yeah, and you are making noise. The clank title is you guys making sound yes. as you're going through this cave, trying not to wake the guy up. And if you make too much noise, he comes for you. Um, yes. And so the basic idea is you, you, you start with a deck. Everyone starts with the same little deck. Yes. And then you play your cards on your turn. You gain more cards that give you more special abilities and more movement and more fighting. And you just, every turn, you get more and more cards. I love deck building games I so do much. do, too. It's one of my favorite you mechanics. you start with this, and you end with this. And you're just like, ha, 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 I can do anything. <laughs> like, it's so yes. good. Um, but yeah, it's, and then Clank in Space is, I prefer slightly more, just because the theme is so awesome. I mean, basically, you are, now instead of going down to a cave, you are jumping you are sneaking onto a star destroyer <laughs> from star wars kind of and every card in the game is some kind of pun to star trek star wars firefly sure anything sci-fi so every card just is a funny inside joke if, if you get them and uh, but yeah so fantastic work so, or not worker plays it uh deck building and game you've left out like some of my favorite things oh, yeah about well, clank, i want you to clank talk specifically uh, so there's two levels to the board. Mm -hmm. There's above ground and then there's below ground. So the further down into the depths you go, the better treasures are. Mm -hmm. But if you die below ground, you get no points. Yeah. But if so push you push your luck, if you can make it, if you could go all the way down, snag a good treasure, and you get just one space above ground, you still get all your points. Mm -hmm. Now you don't get the extra points for actually escaping and yeah. like getting to the town. But still, it's almost like they drag your body back and be like, "Look at the great things he found. <laughs> yeah. but, he will be remembered." <laughs> <laughs> and then they loot him. Yeah. Uh, but no, like that part of it was so neat to me and so funny because it's like. If I could just make it like a little bit further mm -hmm. because the cards that you play, like some of them are for movement. Some of them are for combat. So you might be fighting different monsters. And then uh, some of them are to buy cards out of the lineup to make your deck bigger. Mm -hmm. And then when you make clank, this is the other fun thing. When you play a card with Such clank on mechanic. it or with noise, you take it your color cube and you put it sort of in this pool that sits over here by the dragon. And when a card comes up that says that the dragon wakes up 
you take all of those cubes that are piled up there and you put them in this little black bag with a dragon, red dragon on it. You shake them up. Now there's some black cubes in there. Those are the dragons. That's the cubes. If you draw those out, he doesn't find you. But if they draw your color of the cube out of the bag, well, that's a hit. And you've got only so many hits you can take, yeah, like 10 life, life or whatever. Track, yeah. And so it's so much fun. Like everybody's like, it's oh, so crap, good. we're drawing things out of the bag. And especially if you're down to like one or two life. And you may only have like two clank in that bag, but it's like, man... They're going to draw me. I know they're going to draw me. That's what I was going to say I really like is that it has this nice thematic nature of you can be as loud as you want, and you're you know, the louder you are, the more likely you are to get attacked. But technically, I could be super loud and just get him killed <laughs> yes. like because and of it. It and has I happened. Love it. It's so good. Yeah. Clank is so much fun. There's a ton of tension. Uh You know, there's that – there because there is that press your luck mm-hmm. aspect to it, right? So there's deck building – uh, bag building mm-hmm. in a way, uh, the press your luck, man, there's so many aspects of clank and clank in space is, is awesome. Also, uh, I just talked, was talking a ton about the, uh, the original clank cause that's the easiest one for me to kind of explain the sure. And it also has expansion options and yeah. oh, there's expansion options for, uh, I think there's one space, right? Oh, the, I haven't cyber even seen station the second one and there. Armageddon. Yeah, I have I Armageddon, the second one. I don't okay. have cyber station. Yeah. My bad. And then with the original Clank, there is now the Legacy version, which I have to play. Yep, I've heard very good things. I've never, I have not heard anybody say anything bad about yeah. it yet. Have to play it. And I've got the Sunken Treasures map, the Mummy map. Yeah, because uh, I love Clank. So, so, much. so the thing with Clank is, it is not the easiest deck builder game out there. Like if you're going to learn deck building, That's but I feel one. like it's one of the funnest ways to get into deck building yeah you want to test deck building and it's not too hard yeah no it's definitely not um i honestly thought about taverns of tiefenthal Uh uh-huh just because how well it teaches you different mechanics but i do feel like for me that is a next step game sure um but yeah so same reason with clank i just think clank does it a little simpler and uh it introduces that mechanic well enough without just being dominion or yep. something right yep um so yeah there's more to it there's meat on the on the bone yes. that's gonna make it oh. very enjoyable clank is so good but uh clank yeah it's so good clank check it out it's fantastic number seven for us one of my all-time favorite games the technically it's the second game i bought nice and i have bought this game as gift gifts for friends uh it is dc deck builder it is so easy People that love and are invested in theme are not going to get that. (laughs) It is a deck building game with DC heroes and villains painted on. I'm fine with that. I can live with that because I don't care if Batman and the Joker are fighting together. But you are essentially, you're playing cards from your hand. Like Clank, everybody starts with the same cards. You are buying cards, making your deck better. You might also be able to eliminate some of them crummy cards. And then there are there's a stack of supervillains that you're going to make your way through. And as you, uh, the the currency of the game is called power, right? So you you're playing cards from your hand. They give you power. A villain might cost like ten power to beat, where you could buy super strength for five power. You know, so that's going to later on give you more power as it as you cycle through your deck. Uh, so then it's kind of a race then to to get through that villain stack because they're all worth victory points. And even the cards you buy out of the lineup are worth victory points. And once you get through that stack game over, man, you just go through, (laughs) count up your points. I played this game yesterday. I played this game a week ago. I will play this game anytime with anybody. I love it. And I have almost all the expansions for it. I've played this game once and I actually don't think you were there, which is the funny part. It's crazy. But um, I run around with like a DC deck builder flag. Like I love this game. It was fun. Uh, th- this is the main reason I chose to do the evens is because this is the only game I don't know a lot about. I sure. played it one time, and it was an enjoyable experience. So it's, I trust you. It's very easy to teach. Yeah. It's I mean it's really like and you can even play your hand. You could play open handed, mm-hmm. and it really does not affect gameplay. Uh, so a lot of times when I'm teaching it to especially really new gamers. I just play open-handed. Yeah. We go, okay, hey, boom, boom, boom. I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing this. And then two or three rounds in, they've got it. And the game rarely goes more than 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. Depending on how complex a, a thing you're doing, there are expansions which really like drastically increase sort of the technical difficulty of the game. So there is that. 
once you once you've got a good foothold in, but you could just play the core box and not need anything and have a really good time. I taught it to my uh, nephews who are like was 10, you know, 10 and 13 at the time. You know what I mean? So it was really easy to do uh, and a lot of fun. I love the game. It's super easy to play and find. It's dirt cheap. I think it falls under the villainous category too, to where you just tell people, hey, we're going to be playing as all the DC superheroes. And it's like, oh, I'll try that out. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like, I guess if just a, technical honorable mention here i guess if you prefer marvel characters then there is legendary much more complicated sure much more complicated but a deck builder with the marvel and theme. marvel legendary is awesome yeah i absolutely love marvel legendary and some of the other variations yes of the legendary but dc is the easy one correct dc will get you really uh it will it will hone your skill with deck building yeah like you could play that and if you play that then you're gonna have a really good grasp uh and it, it, DC is the reason Dominion's not on my list. Yeah. Dominion is a very super important building block game to the hobby, yeah. but there are so Be many... careful. Don't insult it. I know. There's so <laughs> many games, though, that do that mechanic better, in my opinion. Mine as well. Uh, and, I mean, Dominion's kind of dry. Uh, no, you're insulting it now. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, sometimes yeah, people I don't like let my copy pastry, get wet. Right? Yeah, don't, <laughs> yeah. don't feed it after midnight. Don't get it wet. Because <laughs> yeah. then you get the other Dominion expansions popping yeah. out. But no, uh, DC Deck Builder is so accessible and easy and breezy and fun and light. And Cover Girl. And Cover Girl. Is that Jennifer Garner? Is she here now? I may need to go. Number six <laughs> <laughs> is uh, a staple. Honestly, yes, um, it's a staple. It's just <laughs> yeah. Have you ever played it? It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've made that joke before. Have we? Um, Carcassonne. Yes, Carcassonne. It's tile laying, just such a simple and yet fulfilling game. It's fun. It blew people's minds when it came out, man. Yes. Of like, hold on, I'm building the board. I like, think it is the fourth game I bought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bought Carcassonne real early into my game collecting. Carcassonne was actually really late in my game collecting, but I had played it as a kid so many times. Oh, okay. Like, I knew the game. Sure. Right? Um, but yeah, so uh, you are taking tiles um, out of stacks and into a hand, and then you play it down on the field, and you are connecting roads, you are connecting fields, you are building towns, and every time you place a tile, you have the option to put a guy down to kind of claim a part of that tile. Right, that like you're maybe going the road to, yeah, or the farm. Exactly, or part of the and then you will be scoring that either immediately, depending on the situation, or later, like the farming... Um, farming scores at the end. At the end of the game. Yep. So you, 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 you almost set the farmers up, and you have to purposely complete that farm around him. And you could... You could um, steal points from people by putting your meeple. Like if you have more of your little meeples in an area mm -hmm. than somebody else, when it's time to score, you're like, ha ha. Yeah, or you can purposely force them to split a city cost with you and stuff right. by getting that last placement on stuff. Yeah, right. But uh, I honestly don't know what to say too much about Carcassonne. It's there's so many versions, so many expansions. It's it's a staple. Find I, <laughs> find a copy that comes with like maybe the river. Yeah, That's the river the one I got and is cathedrals, good. I think, are the two that come with Carcassonne a lot. Yes. Um, if you get one of those, you've got plenty of game in there to play a bunch. Oh, yeah. That's all I have. And then you can, if you want, go out. They've got ton tons of little <clears throat> mini expansions yep. even that are just... I don't know, five bucks. Yeah, it just adds go. a new special type of building, yeah. whatever, that interacts with the guys different. Yeah. Yep. Um, so simple, so affordable, and yet I use the word a lot. It's just fulfilling. You, it's good. The, the stuff that you're doing, seeing the board get bigger and bigger and bigger as you are collecting points. Your cool and, little city. And yeah. then it's fun to make like a really long, windy road. Uh -huh. Like, oh, look at this. Yeah, this is just so cutting going. through everyone's town. Yeah. Hey, guys, how you doing? <laughs> no, it's bad. It's, it's awesome. Yes. It's awesome. Kark Oson. Carcassonne. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. French city, right? Correct. Yay. I said something. Yep. Number five? Number five. Number five is my... Top five. Yeah, now we're in the top five. Now it's getting real, guys. <laughs> uh, we have to include it. It is a staple. There are versions of this that... Or variations of this mechanic that I prefer more. But Pandemic. Yes. Pandemic's the easy uh, go-to... How would you? It's it is one of the best co-op games, sure. well-designed co-op games. To a lot of people, it is still the co-op game, sure. which is crazy. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's 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 it does it's what it does well, right? But like to have 
to have it start this genre of co-op almost and have it grow so much and people to still look at pandemic still go crazy like about pandemic it means something it's really good so you're trying to stop uh, topical right a viral outbreak uh there's different types of viruses that are coming out and the cards they pop up in different cities. So the map is basically a map of the world and uh, the viruses are going to populate in different cities. And you, as a team, you're playing experts with different abilities. So I might be, uh, I might be able to help people get around the map better. Somebody else might be better at like eradicating uh, the viruses. The medic. Where they're, where, where they're so at. Strong. There's a ton of versions of pandemic most of them are pretty solid, but, and again, it's a game you can find about anywhere. Yeah. Like you can find it in a big box store. You can find it in game stores. You really can't go wrong. I, there's other versions. So once you, if you played pandemic or something like pandemic, I would recommend, like, I like defenders of the realm and defenders of the last stand. Those aren't always the easiest games to get a hold of. They play very similar, but one's like a fantasy theme and one's more of like a Mad Max theme. Mm -hmm. And I dig it like a lot more. But, I mean, Pandemic is, I mean, you can't go wrong. I will say, you were saying, uh, dig it. Uh, uh -oh. As a replacement for Pandemic, we know that uh, the idea of a virus destroying the planet and you trying to eradicate it can be a touchy subject for a sure. lot of people right now. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so there are other games out there. I recommend Forbidden Desert. If you like the basic uh, uh, mechanics of pandemic you you have the four actions it is a cooperative game but in forbidden desert instead you were on like an airplane thing that crashed in the desert and you are now working together to search the desert to find all the pieces of your airplane to rebuild it to escape mm -hmm. but it has the four actions you're moving around it is in my opinion slightly harder to win yeah i find pandemic pretty simple at least you know base game pandemic base game of Forbidden Desert because that's all there is. Pretty hard. Yeah, uh, like you, you got to work together. But I like that challenge. Well, and then there's Forbidden Desert, Forbidden Island, Forbidden and Island, Forbidden Sky. Yes, Forbidden Sky mixed reviews a bit, so probably wouldn't recommend that one. Forbidden Island, though, is fantastic. I only include Desert because I do I like challenging things. I think Forbidden Island is too easy. I, like it probably goes Forbidden Island, Pandemic, Forbidden Desert, right? As in terms of oh, difficulty, how, okay. Forbidden Island is almost a guaranteed win. Like oh. it's very simple. Gotcha. Have you not played it? Nope. It's very simple. Oh, sweet. Um, Forbidden Desert that. is almost too hard. Like you play it on easy, and it's like, man, this is like I'm sweating, <laughs> but I like that. Sure. Um, and Pandemic is a nice even ground there. So yeah, one of those games, whichever one you think fits you the most, Forbidden Island is the island is uh, sinking. And you have to explore tiles and gain all these relics before the island sinks. And we already explained the other two. But, um, yeah, one of those three games, they're great. You can't go wrong. They are great. Like, man, if you want a cooperative game, you, can't you, go you wrong. almost have to start with one of those. Easy to find. Too. Yeah. Easy Super find. easy. And, and not expensive. Yeah, especially the Forbidden Games, insanely affordable. Pandemic yes. is also cheap, but, yep. like, they're, like, <laughs> half the price of Pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, number four. Number then. four. That's an even number. Yeah, that's okay. You. Number four. If you don't own this oh, game, gosh, I love this game. If you don't own this game, this game go so to your local store immediately. I love this game so much. King of Tokyo is one of the best games ever made. I like, love King of Tokyo. I, I don't know. I don't know why it is so good. So in King of Tokyo, you are all taking on the role of monsters. So it's not IP, but I'm gonna say Godzilla, King Kong, right? Those kind of things, a like giant a giant killer bunny. Cthulhu. Yeah, there is a giant Cthulhu expansion. Killer bunny. Um, and you are working against each other to try to control, uh, either kill everyone else, right. or to control Tokyo long enough to get the most victory points and win. 20. 20 victory points, 20 yes. points ends the game. So the basic idea of the game is Yahtzee. Yep. You, King of the Hill, Yahtzee. King of the Hill, Yahtzee. You roll dice. You choose what you want to keep. You roll again, choose what you want to keep. One last roll. Three rolls. And it works perfectly. It's so much it fun. It is so good. And the power-up expansion, which I think you can just start the game with. Yep. I don't like... I, I agree. Throw it in. Even if you're learning the game, throw it in. Basically, just if you roll three hearts on your turn, you still get to heal from those hearts, but then they also let you draw a card from your special deck that is only you. Like, the Godzilla guy has his own Godzilla deck, and it's like permanent upgrades or quick, powerful, one-time abilities that you can use on the other players, and it makes the game so much more interesting because it adds this asymmetric, no, I am Godzilla. Right. You are King Kong. Right. Um, and Trademark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Don't, I am from. Yeah. You are from. from. <laughs> but uh, I, I I no, it's so good. Instantly buy the game. I play it. I play with my eight year old. She mm. loves it. We yep. have a good time. It's a ton of fun. 
It is you can play with two players, but it's even more fun if you can get three, four, five players to play. It's it's super easy. It's super fast. It, it obviously depending on luck of the dice a little bit. But I sure. actually brought it to work one day when I had my own factory job. We got a fifteen minute break, and we were playing with like four people, and we finished the game nice. in fifteen minutes. Nice. Now we were Russian, but we That's taught right. and finished the game. I don't have the in Russian. Fifteen minutes. Oh, you don't have the Russian no. one. I can't read any of it, so I sure. can cheat. Sure. Perfect. <laughs> That's Perfect. how that works. No, but it um. The fun thing about it, right, is that if you go into Tokyo, you're scoring points each turn that you start. Correct. And when you roll your hits, the little paw symbol, you hit everybody. Everyone. But the problem is, while you're there, everybody else, as they're rolling, if they roll paws, they hit you. Yeah, they everybody. only hit you. And the better part is, if you get hit, you can go, I'm out. Yep. And you make the person that hits you go <laughs> Get in, in there. They can't say no. <laughs> and you can start wailing on them. It is so much fun. And uh, there's a fun, like, tense dynamic, you know, and usually a lot of table talk going mm-hmm. over, you know, and trash talking. Yeah. Gosh, it's so much fun. Yeah. King of New York's really good, too. It's sort of a... I a, actually have not had the chance to play that one yet. It's a slightly more complicated. That Yes, I've heard that a lot. Slightly. So if you play King of Tokyo and you're like, oh, this is too light. Sure. Which, insane. It's uh, almost perfect. It's, it's so much fun. But King of New York's really good, too. It's really good and a lot of fun. But I would always say King of Tokyo first. Yes, definitely. I would, I would, I, and if you, like you said, if you can find the Power Up expansion, ding, mm-hmm. really good. Oh, and they've there's cool oh. versions now. Oh. There's a second edition. I need to get King of Tokyo Dark. And they just making, it's, in, it's on my wish list right oh now. So gosh. And King of Tokyo Dark, which is just a gritty black and gold themed. For, it looks it's, incredible. Yeah, it's... Oh. Uh, it, Looks it's, so good. It looks really neat. I'm so annoyed because I already own King of Tokyo and Power Up, but I want it so bad. Yeah, I'm gonna get dark. <laughs> yeah. I gotta. I just gotta find a copy of it. Ugh. Number three. Yep. Number three. This is a like pandemic sort of a broad mm-hmm. swath of games, but I feel like is super easy to get people into the hobby or people that don't play games normally. You can bring them in. We were playing a version of this game. Oh gosh, 20 years ago with roommates. Yeah. No idea really like ab- about the yeah. board game hobby. What it would become. Like I played uh role playing games and a little bit of Warhammer, like tabletop Warhammer at the time. But we used to play a version of Werewolf that we called Mafia. Mm-hmm. So you were in the Mafia, you were a cop, or you're just like a regular citizen. So Werewolf is a hidden role social deduction game for if you don't know. Usually you play with like I don't know, seven, eight people minimum. Yeah. And uh, I don't like to play with like 20 people because too long. I never have. I've always played with that around eight to 10 if I've ever yeah. played it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, like, so two people are usually werewolves and they are trying to eliminate everybody else. And everybody else is trying to figure out who the werewolf is. And the fun thing about this game for me is that the first round, everything starts... Nobody knows anything other than the werewolves know who they are. And it's just like, uh, Dan's got a beard. He's probably a werewolf. Yeah. And, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes from there. It's really fun when your sister's sitting next to you and you're like, she has a beard. <laughs> I think she's a werewolf. Look at her back. It's covered in hair. Yeah. Uh, no, but you just make wild allegations and then uh, baseless allegations. Mm-hmm. And it goes downhill from there. Uh, or uphill, or uphill. depending on how you look at it. But I really like I really like Werewolf. We used to play, and still do, like uh, Werewolf all the time. You could play it. We even have played it like uh, via text threads, yeah, and and things like that. Uh, but there's so many different versions of it. There's One Night Ultimate. I prefer Werewolves of Miller's Hollow. Like if you're gonna play like a pure version of Werewolf, that's sure. that's my favorite version but one night ultimate is super accessible and very popular uh because and it's faster there's just one round good point where werewolf of miller's hollow would probably go four to five rounds can go a little longer we usually give it like you're gonna have three minutes to make your case right like so mm-hmm. three minutes of everybody arguing and pointing fingers and we go okay time's up we're gonna vote yep and just boom. And then that keeps the game moving. But this is like a beer and pretzels game. You know, you can have a beverage, you're just snacking, and everybody's just kind of sitting around hanging out. And when, yeah, you have to be in the mood that, especially in the normal werewolf type games, you have to be just as willing to watch the game as you are to play the game. Yep. Because the odds are you're going to die. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're going to be watching for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but it, if, again, keep it short. Exactly. That and, is a moderator thing. Right. And then, was, But sometimes when you die, you're like, oh, who killed me? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to yeah. kill <laughs> that son of a beep, 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 you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, but there's so many really good versions of this. Like my new favorite one, I was introduced to. To me by you uh, is Wolves of Mercia. Yes, I love that is Wolves my of Mercia. favorite werewolf game that it I've is, played. It is my favorite implementation of it. There is another one that I really, really like called Stay Away, which is kind of based on the thing. Mm -hmm. And that one's more involved because it involves you have to get up and change seats. Yeah. And you basically can only affect your neighbors. Mm -hmm. It's really fun uh, and gets kind of wild. But uh, not for everybody. But I think that you could play some version of Werewolf with just about anybody and have a really good time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it, is, it is a social game. It, it is, is a game where it, the fun is who you're playing with, not even necessarily the game you're playing. Like, yes, the game is the game puts you in a fun situation. Right. But the fun part is argue with is giving each other the dirty eye and arguing oh, and being yeah. like, oh, it's it's him, man. Well, it's him. we we've even played where like you go around and introduce yourself, right? And so be like, I'm Wilhelm the oh, barkeep. Yeah, right? okay. And uh, we have uh, my buddy's wife who would play a lot with us. She's always Charlotte the the barkeep, you know. So then there's all if she dies, then everybody's like, well, who's running the bar now? Like, you can't go to the tavern anymore. Yeah, nice. Create your own little fake society. Yeah, so, you know. And then we had one, my one buddy, who would always pick, like, the worst job, and everybody would want to kill him. I'm the village arsonist. Yeah. You know, and it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait. Like, we need to get rid of this guy. Why do we still Just have that? Based on that. Yeah, and it's... And it would get worse, like yeah. not in PG things. Sure. And it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, we gotta, <laughs> he can't be here. And he would get killed. Yeah. And if he lived, then it would just get even worse and worse and worse. But yeah, so it, it, it's it's sort of like Sheriff of Nottingham. It's as fun as you make it. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Great comparison. If you want to get into it and really, and you don't have to do that. You can just be like, yeah, no, I'm not a werewolf. Yeah, no, it can be a relaxing game. I yeah. just find it more fun to be oh, I over like the to, top. I like to get crazy with it <laughs> yeah. and, and just loud. And if I get killed, I make a big scene out of it, even if I don't care. Mm -hmm. you, know, you like to make a big scene out of it and everything because it's fun. Yeah. All right. Number two. Number two. Re similarly to how um, Wolves of Mercia recently kind of toppled the werewolf or the social deduction thing for me. Uh huh. Just one has taken over party games for me. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. It, it's it's destroyed. Like I still love concept a lot. Also a simple game. You never like, played concept. Oh yeah, super simple. Uh, you don't even need the game. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah. So just one is. I it, every time I explain it to someone, they're like, "That sounds so easy, like boring." And then we play it, and they're like, "That's one of the best things I've ever done." But uh, so you have little whiteboards, and someone has a card. Tim has a card with five random words on it, and he just chooses uh, number five. Number five. Okay, number five is pandemic. That's a word. Okay. So then yeah, everyone else playing has to write a one word clue on their thing without looking at what each other's writing to get him to guess pandemic. So someone might write virus. Someone might write global, right? Right. But then we, then once we've all written something, we all show each other without Tim seeing it. And if any of us wrote the same thing, our clues get eliminated. Yes. So we have to try to think of, okay, what would, what would Bob say? I don't want to say what Bob would say. Right. But then Bob's also thinking, well, I don't want to say what I would obviously say. <laughs> right. They're going to, so, so, and then we all show Tim and then he just has a couple seconds to look at it. And then, uh, Tim, you heard global and virus. What's your guess, man? Oh, Batman. Wow. Not even close. Gosh. Tim, you suck at this Gosh. game. <laughs> Terrible. And then it's the next round and the next person That's goes, it. that is it. That like is there is it. technically scorekeeping in the game. I never do. Like I keep, I keep a tally of how many we've gotten right and wrong just so we can see how much we suck but that's right. it that, that's all i do no uh just one toppled code names for me oh yeah i mean code honestly names. code name was always okay for me so see, i love code names it. i could get anybody to play code yeah. names but uh just one yeah i mean we play it via zoom mm -hmm. like now with uh, people staying home and we'll we'll play like 12 people on Zoom. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Well, yeah, just one's a game, too. Obviously, it depends And all on... you need is a dry erase board or say, a piece of paper. Yeah, a piece of Boop. paper. Just, okay, here's you my could play guess with this two, time. Two, well, three people. Like yep. two, you could play with a hundred people. You could. It, it, don't. The difficulty is going to go like this, depending <laughs> on how many people you're yes. playing with. It's like too few people. This is hard. I don't have enough clues. Too many people. Overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> this could be anything. <laughs> yeah. So. No, it just one's so good. And again, very accessible, cheap. You can find it anywhere. Mm -hmm. You have a friend that has a copy. 
play with them. You know, play online. Bring a bunch of people. It's you could play with your in-laws, uh, your parents, mm-hmm. your kids. It's very easy to do. Yep, really good. Yeah, if you're looking for a just fun party game, like something you can crack out and play with no time limit, we could play one round, we could play for three hours, yep. you know, you're just at your family's house, you're just relaxing, just one is like a must-have. It's really good. It's really good. Now, number one mm-hmm. is the, I think it's the first game. It's the first game I bought. Yeah. First game I bought to for as I was getting into the hobby, and it's an easy one. There's a ton of variations. But Ticket to Ride, yeah, it is quintessential. Mm-hmm. I I didn't buy regular Ticket to Ride to start. I bought Ticket to Ride Europe. Well, look at that. <laughs> slightly, it's slightly more complicated. Yeah, slightly heavier. Yeah, uh, but not really. The only thing is, it's like, oh, well, United States, you know where Los Angeles is and where New York is. Where for Europe, <laughs> for me, I'm like, I don't know, what's this town called? Yeah, where is that? Uh, but it makes you more knowledgeable, I yeah. guess. It's actually funny you bring geography. up that comparison because the one that I own is Ticket to Ride Great Lakes. So oh. it's literally like Just. our area, like South Bend is like a location on the Sweet. map you can go to. Like, so it's like, I know that spot. You oh, know? I know like, where that is. Yeah. So, so Ticket to Ride, there are, it's a map of whatever region you're playing. So yep. for, for example, the United States, right? Mm-hmm. It is, and there are different colored squares there might be three there might be four might be two or one in between that are connecting these cities on the map and you are going to have a have a hand of cards which are essentially train cars uh, of different colors yellow red blue black white whatever orange Mm -hmm. there's a ton of them green there's no limit to the amount of cards you can have in your hand you're drawing cards and then you're going to lay down these cards of the of the same color to place that many train cars to connect the city and what you're trying to do is you're going to have these secret objectives. <laughs> like I need to get Seattle to New York, or maybe you've got like a really easy one and it's like Los Angeles to Phoenix, right? Yeah. Like, so, okay. So that one's not going to be worth near as many points because it's a shorter route. The fun thing is if I know, oh, Dan's trying to get to Las Vegas. Yeah. He can see my train heading in that he's, direction. He's going. So I'm just going <laughs> to cut that sucker off and now he doesn't get those points. I understand why I haven't played this game with you. Oh, oh I mean. <laughs> Cut me off. I am so mean. But the but there's a lot of different ways you could do it. You could you could build your tracks in any order, you know, so you could throw people off. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of strategy to it. Or you could just start. I'm going to start here and I'm just going to work my way across the map. At the end of the game, you can score extra points for having the longest continuous uh, track. But... I mean, Ticket to Ride is so easy, but it's really fun. There's a lot of different expansions, yeah. which will give you, I think, enough variations to keep it interesting, at least for a while. Yeah. And again, a game you could kind of take anywhere. You could bust it out in an hour with teaching, I think, and just play. Like, I always tell people, don't overthink it. Like, yeah. Just play. Like, you'll be fine. Yeah, I think the the two nicest things about Ticket to Ride for people is the areas that Ticket to Ride covers is like you will find one that has like your hometown like you, on the map. Right. You're just like, I want to play my area. It's you like, could find You will find it. You can find it. Um, and the other thing is that the difficulty is so up and down. Like, oh, oh, you like Ticket to Ride, but it's a little too simple. Here's this one. It's more complicated. That one's too complicated. Here's this one. It's slightly more simple, but but similar. Like they like uh, the Great Lakes one that I have adds boats. Oh, as right well. On. So you have you have train cards you're collecting, but you also have boat cards you're collecting, and you play them separately. So like you can go from one city to another city that's on a waterbed. Then you have to turn into boats to cross the water, uh, and then okay. turn back into trains to continue. Nice. And like it's just it, it adds that second level of complexity without being insane. But but if you want that, like it offers that, and Ticket to Ride is so good about yep. that. Yep. Yep. You, you will find the difficulty level you want. And if you want to drop some money. Uh, there's that. Was it the? Were you going to bring that up? Anniversary, the tenth, tenth anniversary. Yeah. Tenth anniversary. Of Amazing. Ride. We bought that I used for my. To own it. We bought it for my father-in-law for Christmas a couple mm-hmm. years ago, uh, and uh, but the train cars are customized. So there's yep. like the root beer car. Yeah, and they're the, all different. The zoo cars. Yeah. Oh, stunning. The giraffe head sticking out. Of the Such top. a great. It's really good. Like deluxe edition. It's really of the game. good. And the it's map really is good. so much. better. Bigger, it makes it look so nice. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I love Ticket to Ride. It's really good. I bought that game very early on uh, in my well, actually number one. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty early on, and, Jim. Right. Uh, but I still, we it still gets played. It's easy to teach. There's even a 
uh, kids version. Yep. So you can play with your kids, which yeah. for me is huge because I'm trying to uh, brainwash. I mean, get my children to play <laughs> games yeah. and want want to enjoy games. So yeah, uh, tickets rides a really easy one. Yeah, and with still a lot to offer mm -hmm. while being easy and accessible. You can find Ticket to Ride, big box stores, game stores, yeah. everywhere. Are there versions you can't find? Sure. sure. But there are also 50 versions you can easily find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's like Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> There's Cubsopoly. There's Great lakes Opoly. Yep, right? I have uh, Louisville-opoly at home. Louisville. Because Why we Louisville? Went on, because we went on vacation and we saw it there. <laughs> and we were like, I've that's got a funny. Ton of family there. Like, oh, that's <laughs> yeah. kind of random. Like, yeah. what? Why there? I know. It, it's You're stalking everywhere. me. Yeah. Yeah. I oh. did. I was like, I want to play where Tim's family is. I get it. They're cool. They're super cool. Guys, hold on. We, uh, Hold we, did on. A, we did a Facebook poll. We did. We did a Facebook poll on the Meeple Game Society on Facebook. So if you are interested, we hang out there a lot. We comment there a lot, post a lot there, share our shows there. We did a Facebook poll. I just took the top five yep. vote getters. Yep. I'm wondering if there's any we haven't mentioned. There That's was. What I'm wondering. I purposely one. didn't look. There's okay. one that we have not mentioned, and there's uh, several. We didn't mention any of the honorable mentions that I wrote okay. down that got a lot of votes. But a ton of people threw up a lot of different options. And man, I was like, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. But I went with just the top five vote getters. Sure. So we have Lord to Waterdeep as hey. number five. Ding. We were right. <laughs> we were right. Uh, King of Tokyo, number what? four. Yay. Uh, so these games that have three different, so him and I independently, and then a group of people, like I'm saying, look at these games. Yes. Yes. This one, I wanted to put on my list. I just didn't have room on it because of other games that I like better mm -hmm. Catan yeah Catan I, is really exactly. good Settlers of Catan really good you can't go wrong you you can get Catan you'll have a good time it's easy to teach Catan can take a little while sometimes depending on who you're playing with but Catan's really good sure. I like Catan yeah I feel the same way that I just I haven't played it in a long time because of other games so but Catan was number three yep number two Carcassonne hey super yeah. accessible Carcassonne and Catan are always next to each other they're so similar to people, I guess, just like because of their age and like yeah, how probably, sure. infamous they are and stuff. Right. They're always next to each other. Really good. Really accessible. We've already talked all about Carcassonne. And they both start with C. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. That's so they're why. Literally that's why they're right next to each other. <laughs> yeah. And number one, Ticket to Ride. Ticket to right? Ride. I mean, it was, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. It is a no-brainer. But some honorable mentions, uh, some games that uh, I think are worth talking about and also got a lot of votes on the Facebook poll. Love Letter. Yeah. I really like Love Letter. And another game that, man, pick a theme. You know, they're, right. they've either made it or they're going to. And and Love Letter, you could pick up really cheap. You can find it mm -hmm. anywhere. It's just really a small deck of cards. You, yeah, with it a is, couple... With a couple cubes. People, a couple score trackers or whatever, yeah. yeah. It's, soup, it's really easy to carry around and, and take around with you. Munchkin. Munchkin got a lot of votes. Never played it. I really like Munchkin. Yeah. Munchkin, though, gets a lot of hate. Exactly. That's and why I get I've it. never played it. I get it. <laughs> no, we should play Munchkin. I've yeah. got Marvel Munchkin. I've got Cthulhu Munchkin. And I've got... And regular Munchkin. Regular Munchkin is full of all these great D&D jokes. Yes. I, I, I've heard that as well, which I never... I was never really big into it. It's similar to the whole Clank in Space. Sure. You know, I appreciate that kind of thing. So, but Munchkin, there's a million themes yeah. for Munchkin. Anyways, Munchkin's really fun, but it is like you have to have thick skin yeah. because your friends are going to try to kill you. <laughs> and that's, I think that that's In the that's meanest fun. way possible. In the meanest way possible. Uh, another one that got a lot of votes, Smash Up. Yeah, okay. Smash Up is a deck builder, kind of. You basically kick, pick two factions yeah. to start. You might pick zombies and dinosaurs, shuffle that deck together. Now you have zombie dinosaurs. Zombie dinosaurs. <laughs> nice. Anyway, so you're trying to you're playing your cards. You're trying to control these bases. Once you've got like as so much power assigned to a yeah. base, you get the points for it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There's a million expansions. So many. It's insane. Smash Up. There's unicorns. There's sheep. There's... Spies, there's gnomes. Is there not Cthulhu yet? Oh, there's Cthulhu. Okay, I, they're I better. It. Bad. It's yeah. actually it's funny you say that because it's called the obligatory Cthulhu expansion. Oh, yeah, that checks out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. perfect. They're very self-aware. Yeah, it's really it's really fun. It's really fun. Splendor, a game you love. 
<sighs> it's not like it's not that I hate it. I just <laughs> I played it once uh, with my wife, and uh, she liked it. She didn't really love it, but she liked it. And I just thought it was like, oh, it's kind of boring. Like, sure. there's, uh, once again, though, it feels like abstract strategy kind of thing, sure. and I don't like abstract strategy. That's fair. So you know, I really like Splendor, like Sagrada. People love Sagrada, and I'm just I, I'm just like, eh. I like Sagrada more than Azul. I haven't played Azul okay. because it's abstract. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. This one I thought was interesting that got as many votes as it did. Uh, Small World. No, yeah, I yeah, I I saw other people's lists. Uh, I didn't see that one, but I, I after making my own list, I was like, I wanted to compare kind of okay. So what do other people think different right. than me? So many Small Worlds, and I was like, interesting. Small World, yeah, yeah and so Small World sure. is territory control. Uh, but th- it's kind of complex. It is. I think they're it's not saying super hard though. I think they're saying small world because they're assuming, which is a fair assumption. Most people have played risk. Oh, sure. So small world is a fine uh, step up. Yes. From, from risk. I, so absolutely. I think that's probably absolutely. why. And small world's really fun. It's Fantastic. Really fun. It's really good. And my favorite, this is my favorite game. That's not on this list. Okay. I play this game all the time, but it's, not always the easiest game to find. I'm hoping that there's like another print edition of it. It's a very small box game. It's not expensive, but for sale. Oh, sure. Yeah. I love for sale. It is, you are, um, you're buying properties with coin. You got money. You start off, everybody starts off with money and you are bidding on these properties and the properties range in value from like one to 30. So like one might be like a sewer and then 30 is like a space station. And it's like, how nice of a house you're going to live in, right? So you spend this first round and you go through the whole deck buying all these properties. Then after that, you've got these properties. Now you've got to sell your properties. And so you get this other deck out and it's monetary. It's cards with like $10,000, $15,000, zero, uh, 1,000, 2,000, whatever. So basically then it's like the person plays the highest card, gets the first pick. Sure. And you just that. want to make money. You're just trying to make money. Yeah, okay. And it plays really fast. There's some there's some tension with the timing of things and like some when you're when you're bidding and auctioning off the uh when you're bidding on the on the uh, properties in the first round, I don't know. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's actually it's a game that's really high on my want to play list oh because of how famous and simple for sale um, is it really is really good. I've it was a long time ago, but I saw it taught and played. But I've never played it. We will play it. Yeah. I love For Sale so much. And it's a really good, you can play it with family, you can play it with hardcore gamers, you can play it with light gamers. It's very accessible in that way. I just don't know how easy it is to go out and find a copy of For Sale right now. Sure. I did, I swear I'd seen it recently. Maybe, but maybe you have. Not. I, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. It is a game that like I think everybody should have. Yeah. But uh, I purposely didn't put it on my list because I thought it might be harder to get. And I think if you're going to go, these are the top five games you should have. You shouldn't have to go into the depths of, of, you know. People do do that sometimes. They're like, games you should have. And it's a game that hasn't been made in 30 30 years. years. (laughs) Like, Why do we both say 30? Well, before Dune, right? Like, got its reprint, Uh right? It's like, Dune from 1978. And it hasn't been made since. Yeah. Good luck, but Good you luck. should own it, oh, and you're scum if you don't. Like uh, Marklin, I think, Ticket to Ride Marklin, isn't that the one that's just famously impossible yeah, to find? Yeah, I think so, and yeah. people are always suggesting it, and it's like, stop suggesting it. Yeah, it's, don't. It's impossible just to stop. find. Just stop. <laughs> just stop. But that's, uh, that was our, that was some honorable mentions off of the Facebook poll. I threw for sale up there intentionally just to see how many <laughs> votes it got. It, did, it got a fair amount of votes, so okay. I was excited. But, uh, but yeah, it was interesting. So I think we're going to, in the future, try to do some more of those polls yeah, and yeah. see see what people think. Yeah, get the communities in. Compare input. our top five, see where we're wrong yeah, oh, no, or how always. they're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, probably me wrong, specifically. But, uh, yeah, that's what we have for you. Yeah. I was excited. I think we were going to originally have two separate top fives, changed it uh, to a top ten because of crossover. We were worried about crossover. Turned out when we discussed, we actually barely had any crossover. No, we had two? <laughs> yeah, so didn't need to do that, but I think it no, worked out. No, it worked out great. Yeah. I was I was happy to do it that way, and it's a fun. it was an excuse to talk more about more games you know and, and uh just you know five plus five is ten anyway shush. okay shush. <laughs> but we talked about we had our facebook poll you're well that's which true. Added that was, one new game yeah hey good job <laughs> that's 11 then we had yeah. honorable mentions yeah we, yeah well, and we sneakily up. snuck out like oh sure from nottingham like right mentioned other right. games Hint, in there <laughs> that's really good Hint. it probably should just go get it yeah number 11 <laughs> yeah let's just keep going right all day we could go all day <laughs> 
But yeah, that's that's our list. I hope we've helped. It's good recommendations, I think, for anybody. Even if you're already well into the hobby, if any of those games sound interesting yeah, to you. Yeah, if you haven't played any. Yes. Like I, you haven't played for sale, for instance. Right, you know, yeah. So. No, give it a shot. If you don't know somebody that buy, I would say that all of these are pretty safe. Mm -hmm. Pretty safe oh, uh, to pick up, uh, add to your collection. If it turns out you hate it, uh, message Dan. He uh, he will then buy it for twice what you paid for yes, it. Yes, I always do that. Always. <laughs> That's my shtick. <laughs> um, like, literally, the only one I think on the whole list that you need to be semi-wary about is you need to... Villainous. You need to do... Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you need to do a tiny bit of research into the, into the werewolf games. Because you, need a, Find you the usually you need like. a big group of people and stuff, and not everyone has access to that sure. kind of stuff. So let's do a little bit of research in the werewolf games if that kind of big party thing interests and, you. But there's so many different variations. Sure. Wolves of Mercy, I think, goes down to five, which is I very love impressive. I that game so for, much. Uh, for it's a werewolf so good. Game. It's yeah. perfect. It is the perfect werewolf game. I for now, think. yes. Yeah. Yes. For now. For now. For now. And for now, I've been Tim. I've been Dan. Thanks for watching. Clank in <laughs> space. If you like what you saw, if you want to see us make more content like this, please hit that thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a share on social media. Remember to bring that little bell. It really helps. Be sure to check out our unboxing videos. Don't forget we have reviews. And also the news show. Thanks for watching the Board Game Rundown.